Welcome, boys and girls, children of all ages. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are in this great world of ours. This is Jamie Matnickel, your host for Blood, Sweat and Metal. It's been a long time coming since we did this type of show, and I want to thank everyone for joining us. And I have my <laughs> best mate, as always, my co-host, David Fowler from Melbourne. Good evening, hey, David. Uh, hello, everyone. And for people over in Facebook land, please come over to YouTube. We've got a live stream chat room as we are recording this. And this is going live to YouTube as we speak. So what you see is what you get. Well, David, um, this is a big type of episode for both of us and um yeah we lost a great we lost a great pioneer in the australian metal community who yeah, especially, especially here in melbourne yeah <clears throat> we, but more so he wove the the pathway for up and coming bands for many generations and we're talking over and almost 40 years of music and he had inspired not just people homegrown in australia but people overseas as well and i remember when i was speaking to him in the interview three four years ago of how down to earth peter hobbs it really is and how much of definitely is Oh, how much, yeah, was, yeah, and how much passion he had with the metal music as such. And for those who haven't heard that interview, please go to Blood, Sweat, and Metal YouTube channel and go down into the play bar and see the um, episodes that we've done. There's many interviews that I've done, but you will see Peter Hobb, Hobb's Angel of Death. Click on it, and we've got a around about a two-hour episode. There's a bit of news that Dave and I did, and then we went straight into the interview. That was over easy an hour and a half interview, so it was all good. But David, I want to ask you, man, because you're a little bit older than me, how did you come across the great man he was? Peter Hobbs. Um, well, basically, I um, came across it because I did a bit of work experience uh, out coming out of school around about the end of not nineteen eighty nine, uh, and I bumped into a bloke named Mark Woolley. Now, for those who don't know, Mark Woolley was the one of the original, uh, or he was the original guitar player in Hobbs Angel of Death uh, on the first album. Um, got to meet him and he, uh, while we're working there together, he goes, oh, I, you know, have a listen to this. And at that stage, uh, as far as Australian bands, I really only heard like ACDC and all that. More, I just heard Mortal Sin just before that as well. And he said, have a listen to this. And it was the first Hobbs Angel of Death album. 
and oh fuck, I was you know blown away by that. Uh, so that was my first introduction to it. We listened to the, the basically the whole album in our lunch break, and that was how I got into the whole Melbourne metal scene and all that. I didn't actually see Hobbs until, until about oh, I must have been about it was at the album launch for the second album, Inheritance. Uh, that was when I first saw, saw him live. So, but yeah, I've over the years, I mean, I've had a few guys, friends of mine that have been in the band as well. Um, there was Mark, um, by Remy, who was who played with Hobbs for quite a while there in recent years. Um, and his son Zach, as actually Bowen and, and Zach, and another guy named Brandon Girl were the, his last, the last three guys that actually played with him before he passed away. Um, they did a, did a gig in Sydney. In the last six to eight, it was, I can't remember exactly what it was. That was six to eight months ago, um, and I think that might have been the last, last ever gig Ho- Ho- Hobbs did. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got into it through meeting one of the band members about got nearly thirty years ago now. So yeah, that's how, kind of how I got into it. Yeah, and right, and I, and I didn't meet him. Meet Peter Hobbs until later on. Um, yeah. yeah, another five or six years after that. But just to see how he pioneered the craft and shared that to the audience to show how much dedicated he was. And yeah, so he's, he's he, very, very, very sort of headstrong and, and had a vision of what he wanted to do, and he kind of did it his own way. Um, he and he didn't. He, he knew what he wanted. He went and did it. He went over to. That's the first album was done in Germany, uh, I believe Harris. Uh, I think it was um, produced by Harris Johns, who I think you know been working with bands like Destruction and that in yeah. Europe. Um, all the the German thrash bands and everything. So, yeah, he's very early on. And they had the the first album was actually bought out on Steam Hammer, the SPV. So, had a fairly sort of large deal in in the metal world, very, very, very fairly large deal very early on and got uh, a lot of notoriety from it. Yeah. I remember so asking. Actually, but, actually, just to start, uh, that Hobbs actually started off. Hobbs Angel Death actually started off before that as a band named Tyrus, and, <clears throat> and actually the guys that were in Tyrus at that, at that time, he he's looking to I think change the name of the band and we'll go go over to Europe and, and have a different sort of make a different sort of a a band, and he wanted the guys from Tyrus to come on, but they obviously didn't go with him. And that's when he ended up getting guys like Mark Woolley and the Darren McMaster Smith and Bill Grezik, who who um, formed the band for the first album, and yeah. took you know, took them over to Europe and everything. So that all how that all came about. I remember. When I was interviewing Peter Hobbs, I asked him a straight out question Should they have been given more credit mission here in Australia, especially on the airwaves like radio and that? And he did actually say it's a bit pathetic how some bands do not get the recognition they deserve from. From radio stations like Triple M and stuff like that. Now, he also he also said he also questioned me, and I was a little bit not ready for this question from Peter Hobbs. He asked me, "Do you think that I am 
an international ban, even though I spend six months out of the year overseas. And I said, you're like ACDC. Then more of an international ban now rather than being an Australian ban because yeah. of what they do. And he's, he yeah, agreed yeah. with me. Yes. Um, I mean, it's similar. I was talking to um, Matt from Mortal Sin. He used to say to succeed, you have to sort of get out of the country and, and expand, you know, expand your audience overseas because – yeah, you know, the the population doesn't sort of carry yeah. up to have as like you know just as a metal band a uh, success here in Australia because of the population. That's I think that's yeah what he's getting at. Always, I think he spent a lot of ended up spending a lot of time overseas. Yeah. You know, you know, pushing the band his own way what and did- getting getting the. Uh, recognition and respect from the international audience, which he certainly did. And, um, he uh, gained, a lot, gained a lot of respect from bands like Malevolent Creation, uh, who ended up covering Jack the Ripper. Uh, there's certainly, I, I know, other well-known bands who um, had a lot of respect for Peter and his, his work, including... Angela Gossow from Arch Enemy, um, who's a big fan of Hobbs Angel of Death, and put numerous others. But yeah, he did. He had a lot of respect from the overseas metal community. So that's another thing to um, just focusing on the music of Australian music as such. Mm. We don't really get the recognition that we deserve here at home. We yeah. get more rec- we get more recognition overseas. Just look at mm. AC- just look at ACDC. Look at yeah. Airborne. For- look at Airborne for instance. They are huge overseas, but here yeah. in Australia, nah. no radio no radio station plays their music. And oh, although except now that. Um, Triple M's got the hard and heavy station going. It's um, they're starting to sort of. I mean, Airborne gets played. I'm hoping now that if there's enough push for it, that we get bands like you know Harlot and and uh, Espionage and and Lord and all that played on it as well. At some yeah. stage as well, which is long overdue. Well, so you let let's go back a little bit. You remember when I was doing the Kiss radio show here in in Adelaide? Yeah, and, I remember that. Yeah. And basically, I had no rules. I I played the stuff that no radio station was playing, and mm. this is where I start to question it. Do People like you and I, Dave, who are fans of certain genres of music, got to go. Got to go to like a community radio station to not only ex- to get the audience exposed to the new music, but to play the music to get more ears listening to it. Because yeah, I mean, it's as many avenues as possible, I suppose. It's- I mean, get it out to as many avenues as you can, like community radio, and hopefully now yeah, that, as I said, you got Triple M hard and heavy on most, uh, most community, uh, most, not community radio, but commercial radio here in Australia. Hopefully, we can give more spotlight to the local, to local bands. And I'm, I'm yeah. hoping that the people behind Triple M hard and heavy, you know, actually really. <laughs> Get behind the local scene now that now that they've got the this platform for them to for the bands to actually be yeah. on, not just stick to the overseas bands and and all that because they are playing some good music overseas bands, but we need to have the Australian bands on there as well. Yeah, and then especially bands like Harlot, Desecrated Lord, 
who have all and Mason uh, and all like bands from New South Wales, some who played played in front of ten thousand people in in Europe and, and around the world or other places around the world as well. But you know, we need to get them recognised here as well. Get yeah. Them, you know, get them out to a wider audience here. They didn't know come in because I mean they deserve it. And, so that, was, and, that was another thing too when I was working on the Kiss radio show at PBA FM. A lot of it comes down to the executive directors. Um, yeah, and, really. And, and they have the they have the final say what needs to be played. When it came to my Kiss radio show, they let me have the whole control because they mm. knew they knew that the only way this was going to work if I had full control of the material that I was playing, and they let me go for it. And, and I, I'm so ever grateful for them allowing me to take that control because. If you only minimise certain songs on a radio platform, people are going to get sick of it after a while. If if you're just going to be playing like that, 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 that mean, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. And originally, um, like the Triple M Hard and Heavy thing, they were originally going to play Metallica twenty four seven for the, the first month up until yeah. the end. Went until you know it comes November and then start playing. So they ended up um, about two weeks in, starting to filter in all the other other bands. I noticed every couple of songs they'd play it, something other than Metallica and all that. Now that now it's just the normal what they should be, what it should yeah. have been. But they've got to add, as I said, they've got to add Australian bands in there. The, yeah. like, I and I suggested a few on. On the page when they said, "Oh, what Australian bands um, would you like us to play?" Name three, and I ended up naming Harlot, Harlot Espionage, and Lord. Um, and Hidden so intent. Got to get more, more of them on there. And with the, apparently, um, he goes going to have a show on the hard, hard and heavy as well now, starting on yeah. Monday or something, I think. And he, he's going to do it. I think. Going to do a separate Australian show as well, yeah. but yeah. But take take that aside. For there's, there are a few people that don't have what we call digital platform services, like they don't have a computer to listen to the radio or whatnot, and that's mm. where that's where the problem is. I believe radio should be available to anybody. Whether it is digital or a normal radio that you listen to in your car going to work, mm. you know. And um, going back to Peter Hobbs, he yeah. didn't care. He didn't care if there was only one person in the crowd, as long as as long as someone's getting entertained and yeah, having yeah. a yeah. Yeah. And, and having and having a ball about it. That's all that matters. Yeah. He. He didn't. Uh, another thing that Peter Hobb did not like, and this this is a little bit controversial um, to some bands, when they start to crowdfund their own fundraising mm. rather than putting their own hard-earned money and doing the hard way like he did. Um, there are some bands that have like um, a Patreon type of. Um, crowd raiser to get yeah. more stuff in that, and Peter Hobbs was a bit offended by it rather than doing the hard work and going through the motions and doing it organically rather than trying to do it, yeah. but that's all. That's the way technology is you now. You can start. Yeah, I mean, the way the things the more, um, all yeah. these days. But, um, I mean, it is, if I suppose, any way to get 
get exposure, I suppose, these, these days yeah. what you need to do. It's, it's, I mean, it's getting, uh, I suppose, harder and harder with, you know, the more bands that are around and all that, to, you've got to sort of put, I suppose, do things to stand out and get yourself ahead, whatever yeah. way possible. Because around yeah. the time when... Around the time when I interviewed him, he was talking about this new album that they were recording. I just want to ask you, ask you, David, did that album actually get released? It did, and the album was called Heaven Bled. It was released about three years ago, I believe. I've got about, oh, I've got about three different CD copies. I'll just try to flip the camera, my camera around you, so I can show you. Um, yeah. and just put the camera around here. That's the US version of uh, Heaven Bled. Yeah. Um, uh, that one. Um, uh, this one here. Uh, I think that's the European version with different back on it yeah. and color. Uh, that one was out through uh, I Roller. And this yep. is the Japanese one, um, which has got two live, live songs on it. Yep. Uh, but it came out in vinyl two, which got a, an extra seven inch single, I think, which had, I think, I think there was re recordings. It was two songs from the second book, but put me back. Yep. Two two songs from the second album, um, Inheritance. Um, so yeah, it came, it came out a bloody good album too. Probably, I'd say near. I mean, the first album's legendary, and so and so. But this album, Heaven Bled. Yeah, if uh, that was to be his last, I mean, it was his last album, and it's uh. Yeah, you know, testament to his work. It's absolutely brilliant. Love it, and I've been playing it a lot since since it came out. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> my my favorite song on it's probably second song in the album, "Walk This Path." Oh, yeah, walk, walk my, sorry, "Walk My Path." Brilliant song. Mm-hmm. Now, um, moving on from Peter Hobbs because um, he was a great man and we salute him. But um, I, I want to say one, just one thing that before um, there is going to be a memorial gig on November 29th at the Bendigo Hotel um, pre-entry. Uh, and celebrate the life of Peter Hobbs. So if you're in town, you're in Melbourne or from Melbourne, or you're going to be in town on the 29th, get along to the yep. Bendigo Hotel, which is in Johnson Street uh, in Collingwood. Well, I think 129, I think. Johnson Street, Collingwood. And, uh, yeah, uh, not sure what's going to be on that night, but I'm assuming a lot of the members are going to be there, maybe to get along and play some uh, Hobbs Angel Death songs, Tyrus as well. Um, so, yeah, it'll be awesome. It'll be packed. It's packed to the rafters. So get there early if you're going to come along and uh, celebrate the life of Peter Hobbs, actually legend in this town or in Australia as well and the world. Another thing we should be talking about, David, at this time of the year, that we always look forward to um, festival news. Download is coming back to Australia next year. It was a bit late. No, it was a bit later than what it was well, last year, too. The, yeah, well, the first download announcement of when download first started was in November. They announced the lineup in November, the very oh, first. No, no, no. Last year they announced it in September. Yeah, but the first one. This is 
<laughs> oh, it won't be in the, se- the second one got an ace, September last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might have been November on the first. The first. Yeah, the, the first one was. Now, the only problem that I have with this is Melbourne date is on a Friday, which is a working date. Yeah, no, I've, you know, yeah I've, that's a bit of a pain, but I've uh, put in for the day off, so hopefully I get it. <laughs> I'd still yeah. probably still go. Probably might go anyway, even if it, I don't get the day off because I can go. And all, there. and also the venue had changed too from Flemington yeah, to the it went back, back to um, it's gone back to the old the Royal Melbourne Showgrounds. I think they that it was at Flemington because they were doing renovations to the showgrounds. Yeah, um, for and that's probably why it was it changed venues, but. Yeah, it's gone back to gone back to the showgrounds, which was the venue for Soundwave and uh, and Big Day Out before it. Uh, now so you can see the what happens. Now let's go old school, shall we, David, for black white metal. Every time when there was a festival like Downwave or anything like that, we we had yeah, what well. we call we had what we call a. Blood, sweat, and metal rumor mill who we think might be on the the lineup. So let's do the old school, shall we? Yeah. Who do you who do you think will be on the bill on Wednesday when they announce it? Well, for those who are in Australia that haven't heard, there's another band that is set to be announced the day after the download festival. Now I've been thinking about this. We're download net line up and now it's going to be on Wednesday. This other band, legendary British metal band, who is probably my is is my second favorite band of all time, uh, Iron Maiden, uh, is meant to be announced the day after. Now, I'm just tossing up whether they're going to be actually on and announced as the headliner for download or one of the headliners for download. But I had a thought about. Think about it. Now, why would Iron Maiden announce the, the next day and have Download announce it the day before? Which kind of is usurping the announcement for, by Iron Maiden for their tour here. Mm. I, I think Iron Maiden will not be on Download. Um, I have heard other rumours that Tool might be on, the, uh, on Download. Don't know where is the headliner, maybe, uh, or one of the headliners, but I'm hoping since he cancelled last year through illness that Ozzy Osbourne is one of, one of the bands that Pirates, I hope, gets announced. Um, that's all I've got at the moment. There's many, other, like, I'm hoping Megadeth get announced, but that's... And, Maybe Metallica since they cancelled. Who knows? But it's going to be interesting to see the first announcement on Wednesday. I don't think Metallica will be on, just be on download. Yeah, no, like, no, no, that, that'll be an outside. Yeah. Outside. But, uh, I'm not counting on that one. No. Uh, uh, Metallica, Metallica are meant to be doing five different festivals through the US next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm yeah. going to go. I'm going to go left of. I'm going to go left of field for David. I'm going to go left the field for the first time on blood, sweat, and metal because yeah. If we, if you saw the the what I call the theme for download the last two years, it it fit a specific gender of metal. You know what I mean. I mean, they, well, they all. I mean, they've had thrash bands and all that, and it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, but I, I truly believe this year it's going to be more new metal. Um, just hear, just hear me out. They're still catered for everyone, I, they? Yeah, I believe it's either Ramstein and Tool will definitely be on the headline for a download, mm. Pos- possibly followed by Disturbed. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe we'll problem. maybe we'll get baby metal, which I don't want to see. Oh no, please no. I hate that <laughs> man. <laughs> um there's always well, room there's always rumors that system of a down will be coming. Hmm. But I mean, with these with these reunions that's been announced, we're talking about Rage Against the Machine are getting back together again. My yeah. chemical, my chemical, ro- my chemical romance are getting back together again. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, but here's a, here's another here's a, here's the curveball I want to give to the fans. Hell yeah, just released a just released a new album. Hammer mm. for a couple Hammer for a couple of months ago just released okay. a new album. Dragon Force just released a new album. Um Testament have done with their new album too. I, I was talking to Gene Hoagland when I went and saw um Dark Angel. He said that at that stage it had just been mixed or is going just about to be mixed. So that should be out early, early to mid next year. So maybe we may get a testament back again, here again. It's a testament to have been here since about uh, 2014, I think they were on Soundwave. Yeah, 2014. Yeah, so we might get testament back. Um, I mean, they were, they were, even though it might slightly, as you said, it might be slightly more new for one of a better term, new metal. Um, they're still they're still going to cater for um mo- for a more yeah you know, wider audience. <laughs> I mean, to cater just for one genre like new metal is cut cutting you know well you know, that's like, a- off the spot face you know that that whatever. So there is, an, there is an anniversary next year, and apparently. It's the anniversary for Silver Chair's Frog Stomp album. So, I don't know. Made, you can, I've heard that Ben Gillies has got back, he's had major back problems. He can't really play much anymore. So, he's he's got, yeah, I heard about that a while ago. I wouldn't mind seeing them actually, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I don't know whether that would happen. happened. But, Good to see. Hey, still Panther will be on the fucking bill. They just got a new album out. Yeah, that that I'd like to see them again. That that'd be cool. <laughs> they're, they're they're funny. Well, they're a bit of um, let's just say to divide the audience, so to, so to speak. Some people hate them, and don't yeah. get it. Some people like like me, you. All that. I, I get the whole thing about them. I get, I get. Apparently, apparently Nikki Six doesn't get them. <laughs> no, no, no. Rephrase that. Apparently, Motley Crue doesn't get them. <laughs> well, no. I think, I think Vince kind of, um, Vince kind of had a laugh at it, <laughs> but uh, Nikki Six definitely took exception to it. Um, Nicky Nicky Six doesn't have a funny bone in his body, mate. No, I like. I mean, I'm I'm a massive fan of Motley Crue, but sometimes they they take themselves too seriously. Yeah, well, you really got to look at it since when when they kicked Vince Dill out of the band and got John Karabi for one album, they kicked John Karabi out and bring Vince Neil back in. What have they really done? Yeah, I mean, they've done what a couple. Albums, yeah. all that. They kind of, they kind of broke up again, or went on hiatus again. Now they they're um done, but I mean after thirty four years, I mean it's fair, fair careers, so don't be yeah. from that. But um, well, hey, um, I I wanted Sabaton to be on the bill, but they playing in in Europe at the time. Download coming around. Um, mm-hmm. Sab- Sabaton did bring out a, a new album called The Great War, fantastic album, but they yeah. won't be there. Um, um, Dragon Force just released a new album, 
they will be here, I think. Um, what about wonder if Creator would come? Who? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Creator, I mean, Creator have got a new bass player now. They've got you, Frederick Leclerc, who used to be in Dragon yeah, Force. The, yeah, the bass player from Dragon Force went over to Creator. So, yeah. I am hearing, I am hearing yeah. that um, I I am hearing that Annihilator will have a new album out before download. Now, whether they'll come to Australia or not, another thing. Yeah, whether I mean Jeff Waters has been to Australia before to do some producing. He yeah. did produce um, an album by, or he was involved in an album by Melbourne band Terra Maze. Um, yeah. Producer, but he, 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 yeah, he came with Stone and was involved in that whole album. I think I forget the name Maybe. of the album. That was the A, but I've got I've got it in my got it in my collection, but I just can't remember yeah. off the top of my head what the name of it is. But they, anyone that knows the name of that Terra Maze album that Jeff Waters is involved in, um, yeah. yeah, put it in the comments or in the chat room or whatever. Another band that might be here depends on his other commitment is the band Fozzy. They will have a new album out in January next year. Okay, so, AEW commitments. Yeah. yeah. So but but um Chris Jericho said that he wants now Fozzy to be playing in arenas rather than in small clubs. Um or, well, or stadiums or Places, yeah, things yeah. like download. Yeah. yeah. So, well, their new album will be out just in time for download. Maybe they'll be on the build. All depends on his wrestling commitment with AEW. Mm-hmm. No, a little bit no, of the, no. a little bit of the bubble air. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what other bands that I think might be on the bill? Um. I don't, think we'll get, I don't think we'll get Megadeth, that, although that would be a nah. personal favourite. Uh, no, I mean, Megadeth is a personal favourite of mine, but maybe but, just but being that they, they're still right, they're still doing the new album, and the fact that Dave's still recovering from his throat cancer at the moment, he's completed the treatments um, and is on recovering. So when he's He's recovered enough. They'll they'll resume re- um, recording the new Megadeth album. So, but I don't. I I'm mean, gonna. I don't think they'll be there at Dan Life. Yeah, I'm gonna throw out some bands. Rage could be on there. They got Rage, a new album. Uh, the, the German band. Yeah, they could be oh, on there. They got it. Yeah, yeah. They they've oh. got a new album. Battle hmm. Beast. Battle Beach is another band. They could be on there. Um, Probably, I reckon they'd bring it on. Uh, what do I want to I would look at Testament. It's got a new album. Um, Heathen or Heathen. Now that, actually, now that um, Exodus. Oh, hang on, mate. I've just got to put, put my phone on. I was, Sandra. You got my call from my phone. Um, now that – where was I? I've forgotten what, what I was thinking about now. Um, now oh, yeah, sorry. Now that Gary Holt's nearly finished with Slayer, ex- I was thinking he'll start concentrating on the new Exodus album. So, you know, uh, although, yeah, I don't know whether they'd be downloaded. Uh, material for next year, maybe the year after. Um, well, let's let's go you know, for a bit know. of surprise. Let let's go for a su- surprise. Mm-hmm. I would love to say I would love to say Wasps come to download. Look, you there, Dave? Were you frozen up? Yeah, David just froze up. We'll get him back in. But yeah, I think um, I'd love to see Wasps come on a bill. And um, who knows what may happen. So, um, 
as we wait for David to get back in, he's just frozen up and whatnot. Um, leave your comments in the in the live chat or comments below. Who do you want to be on the download lineup next Wednesday that gets announced? And have a look what may or may not happen. And find out how many bands that you pick that actually do get announced and see what happens from there. But, um, yeah, David just dropped off. He's got um, technical problems at the moment. So we'll just come in. Here he is. I'll add him back in. Yeah, I'm coming back in. This had trouble <laughs> with... Um... Oh, you're there? Yep. Five. Just need charge. So. Tired. Yeah, hopefully. You're talking about tired. Hopefully, we're right now. Hopefully yeah. we're right now. So, yeah. Are you, are you talking? Yeah. Do you think tired might come on download? So, no, no. Uh, no, my phone. I was just saying my phone's now on charge. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. All I got was like charged, it sounded like tired. I'm saying, what? X no, 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 I thought you might. No, not, we won't get sabotaged. But, um, could we possibly, could we possibly get uh, Doro, could we possibly get Doro to play download? Oh, fuck, I'd love that, to be honest. He hasn't been here since, since um, I always asked the brain strikes and Wayne, when. When did we see Doro here last? It was it 2002, 2003, wasn't it? When when they did it, did the shirt tour? Just looking on the the ticket oh. above my head here. Oh, yeah. Well, probably around about 2002, 2003. She was meant to be here for the destruction of Oz Festival, and um, she ended up getting cancelled. But she ended up coming and playing anyway. Uh, so it was at least a good 16, 17 years ago that she was here. Mm. <coughs> did two shows in Melbourne. She did um, a show at um, Breakers and Mooney Ponds, which is at Essendon Way. And she only did like two songs, did Breaking the Witches and All We Are. Then she did a full show the night after at the uh, – the Gershwin room at the SB, um, full show, and yeah, that, those the only two shows she did in Melbourne. I think she only ever did Melbourne and Sydney on that tour. So it would be nice to have her uh, download next year if, if all possible. Maybe, maybe even, I don't know, maybe you get Arch Enemy back at the night, but. Or, or the haunted, or something for the girls get night wish to play it download. They haven't haven't they just um, finished a new album, or they're working uh, on a new album? They haven't finished. They're in the studio as we speak. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, and yeah, I read something about that today, or yeah. about um, them. And a new album that's somewhere. A, that, that's a new live. That's a new live album coming out in December. It's a live oh, album, okay. but um, the new studio album will probably be out second half of next year. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm. I'd love, to, yeah, I'd love to see some more Bay Area thrash at the download though. Um, I, mean, I would love to see um, Halloween United. Um, to yeah. be a doubt, but that's we'll a see. part that's a, that's a long shot, <laughs> but yeah. that'd be awesome. I mean, I've never seen Halloween, but now awesome. that Kai, Kai Hansen and and yeah. um Michael Kiske are back in the band, that I'd yeah. fucking love to see that. Yeah, I saw, so, a, I saw Halloween with Jay three years ago at the Gov, and 
what an awesome night that was. It was an awesome oh, night. Yeah, that was, that was pre, um, yeah, that was pre um, Kai Hansen and I don't remember they came. That was when they came here and did keep the keep, two keepers albums in their yeah. entirety or something, wasn't it? No, they all top one of their um the uh the studio album. I've got it. I've got it sitting over in the other. See, yeah, no, see? No, yeah I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they released. Yeah. It was, it was another, but they did ended up doing the keepers album sort of something. I might, I might have been thinking about Queensrÿ. Yeah, yeah, yeah Queen, Oh no, Queensrÿ. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Queensrÿ came here and did um. Mine, crime one and two. That was what I was thinking of. Yep. But yeah. No, definitely. Uh, I'd love to see Halloween come yep. here again, but that, that's a long shot, I think. Yeah. And uh, even Ed, Ed guy. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see them here. Never forget that show at the SB where they they didn't want to get off stage and they end up the um people run the SB ended up pulling the plug on them after about you three hours. You didn't see Ed Guy in 2010 when they played at 170 Ruffle? No, it was, um, no, I only, only saw him at the SB. Uh, yeah, that would, that would have been the before. The no, early tour, yeah. But they played yeah. for like three, it was their first tour in here, and uh, it was like they, uh, um, Tobias and a lot of that didn't win a, want to get off the, off the stage. So, so I think that you know, they're having the power. Um, cut off on, on them to make make them leave the stage. It was, <laughs> it was funny. Um, so yeah, no, Ed guy were awesome. They were awesome then, but, but yeah, another download. Hopeful. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of Iron Maiden, as far as Australia, I mean, as far as Australian bands, they, I mean, they've, they've over the first couple of years they've had Australian bands on, like King. I believe King Parrot was on first year, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember first year. And I think Cycroptic were on last year. Um, no, hopeful, so, hopeful. no, Cycroptic was on the first year. Last year was yeah. last year was Airborne. No, but yeah, but I think Cycroptic so and King Parrot. Wait, who is it that we saw? Who is it that we King Parrot we saw on the side stage? Arch Enemy were on, right? Yeah, you had Top Croptic, King Parrot, Arch Enemy on that stage. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah I think I'm hoping they put on, like, as I said, bands like Lord or um, you know, Lord or. Uh, espionage, Harlot deserve a shot at it. Um, get hit. I mean, Harlot, Harlot in it, uh, working on the new album now. Uh, yeah. With it, and uh, who else? Desecrator, I think. I don't know how what they're doing with their new one. Well, they they're on two. They're on two at the moment with Soy What at the moment. Um, yeah, I think they've finished or they're nearly finished with that tour. Uh, I think there might be only one show left on that to do. Um, I think they also did the Metal Church. Yeah, uh, Desecrated did the Metal metal Church tour as well uh, at uh, the Northgate Social Club. I saw that show. Um, oh, I always want one band just to get a opening slot of any sort, and that's headboard. Just get them out there, and boom, they'll, they'll take are they off. Still but... going? Yes, they are. Good, good to hear. Yes, yeah, they're going to be doing an EP rather than a full length album. So, oh, cool. so yeah. they're, they're still going. But what about Sir really... Hero? Pardon. What about say Bon Kira? Yeah, they're still going. They're no, still going. I haven't heard. I haven't heard they're, just, they're just working through things and yeah. also Al Al is back together again. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I re I saw that a while ago. They just about got a new album out, haven't they? Um, I think they're working on a new album. Yeah. Hey, they've got some but, uh, albums coming up soon. I think. 
But yeah. um, speaking of breaking news, there's some breaking news that came out early today, and it is from the Iron Maiden camp that um, Bruce Dickinson has split up with his wife for over th- over thirty years. Um, they are now split up, and um, apparently he's in love with a fan at the moment. Okay. An Iron Maiden fan, so who knows? Yeah. Who knows what's going on? It's not really. I mean, those are the sort of things I'd like to see kept in private, to be honest. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not really news that we kind of... Oh, I mean, just say... I mean, but, it's um, sad, for, sad for them, but that sort of news should be... Yeah. I know what a, Bruce would like to have kept being kept private. Yeah. But whatever the gig is, yeah, he's not married anymore. So good on him. <laughs> yeah. So woman, yeah. if you want it if you woman, if you're looking for more fish in the sea, um Bruce Dickinson yeah. is now available. <laughs> oh maybe not now. Yeah. <laughs> let him get let him fly around the world. But yeah. um what else? Before we wrap it up, David, I want your opinion. Now, I have seen a lot of people being banned from a specific touring promoter here in Australia due to the fact that a lot of... I'm I'm, I'm surprised I haven't been banned by this specific promoter, to be honest. I mean, I know the one you're talking about. We won't won't name them. No, no. Everybody knows who they are. Good about it because I'm, I'm actually going to see one of their shows in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm putting myself into a competition that they're running to win VIP meet and greet. Yeah. Uh, well, Michael Sweet from Striper. What, what's been happening is that a lot of tribute bands from overseas coming to Australia and <laughs> What many fans here in Australia are arcing up about is why pay 60 bucks or more to see a cover band playing the hits that you want to see of the mm. main band. Now... Yeah. Especially, like, um, there's one notable tribute band of the band that is going to be announced on Thursday who is also coming out. Um, yeah. The, the Maidens. Yeah. Now, this time around, and it's no offence to the girls, I'm not saying the no. Iron Maidens. Um, no offence to them. I'm not paying 50, 70 bucks to see no. a pretty band. No. Uh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm all for um, this particular touring company to, you know, bring him out, but I just won't be seeing it. Uh, and we you know... They, I mean, they've brought out some... They're bringing, uh, currently bringing out Life of Agony. Uh, also, Mock Street from Sweet from Striper. They've brought out Striper beforehand that I know of. And those, those are the ones that I know of. Um, yeah, I would like to see them bring out more original bands. But, well, see... So, so, you and I, David, do know the guy that worked for the promoting. And oh, you know more than I do. Um, um, yep. And um, I am not going to say um, anything about it. All I'm going to say is there are too much repetitive tours of so-called tribute bands coming. Like, we we had a Foo Fighters one from overseas, a Lincoln Park one, oh, the, a, the, the Nirvana, a, that Nirvana a, tribute band. Yeah, we had mm. we had a we had a Guns N' Roses one. Now, oh, Kitty, uh, the one that's, that that's, uh, that's when I lost my shit over the old thing. Um, I, was, I didn't mind kind of like the Iron Maiden one at first, and then the, uh, I don't really, then I heard how was, much I was charging for it. Yeah, there was what kidding. There, there was a new one that was announced on Friday 
that Dylan ships them off a down and disturbed tribute band. And, yes. and it's an ex guitarist from Dragon Force and someone else from doing a, a tribute of Chitra. Now, I don't mind. I don't mind cover bands. I mean, David known me. I've, we've been a gig together I'm in gonna, Melbourne. Gonna, I'm actually David, going to see, see a cover band tomorrow. Tomorrow night, or actually three cover bands there. But I'd rather yeah. pay fifteen, twenty bucks see guys locally do it than pay yeah. the sixty or seventy dollars to bring someone out from overseas to that can. When I can see bands down here that do just as good or a better job than what the bands are from overseas. I mean, tomorrow night I'm going to see Kiss Tribute Band with uh, who was on oh, another Iron Maiden tribute band, Power Slave, and um, who's the other one? Sonic Temple tribute to uh, the Cult, and I'd rather pay. And I'm only paying like. 20 odd bucks for that and I'm, I'm not going to pay 70 odd dollars to see a band from a, a tribute band from overseas where I can pay 60 or 70 dollars to you know see a, an overseas band like I did I think I paid about 60 70 dollars to see Dark Angel um, and I can pay when I and then I can I can put more money if I Put more, more money into the the local scene, saying local bands, and then yeah. than paying sixty seven dollars to see a tribute band that maybe not as good as the tribute bands that I can see here. Yeah. Well, David, we'll wrap it up. We had an hour oh, show. A bit of a gig guide coming up, or before yep. we wrap up. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've probably got some gigs there that you want to, you know, about the. Coming up, yeah. I've, I've got a couple that I know I'm going to. You, I've, I mean, I, I, well, coming up here over the next couple of February, I've got a couple. I've got obviously the three Kiss shows, uh, February, uh, sorry, November 21st, 22nd, and then I'm going to the one on November 30th. I've also uh, another one through Hardline Media. Bring out great fucking bears, and uh, and this is no exception. They're bringing out Sacred Reich and a band I'd never f- fucking thought I'd see. Then, who's absolutely legendary in the Bay Area crash scene, um, who had just had uh, also share members with, with or who guys who have been in Machine Head. Uh, a band called Violence, um, absolutely legendary band. I'm, I'm so stoked that I'll be able to see them uh, yeah. for the first time. I'm doing meet and greet for that. It's another, that's on February 29th here in Melbourne uh, at the at Max Watts. So and Sacred Rock and Violence. So I'll be meeting both of those bands on on that day. So yeah. And then also um, in I think it was it February or something. We got we got uh, White Snake and Scorpions. That's coming up. Uh, obviously Iron Maiden. Whenever that's going to be. Uh, hopefully around about. Well, probably around about the time of download. Uh, and I'm I'm predicting that'll be out there on their own. And that's for, as far as I know so far. Plus the hob the. Memorial to Peter Hobbs on November 29th for everyone that wants to get get down at the Bendigo Hotel on, what, I think, 129 Johnson Street in Collingwood. So, yeah, get down. It's just down the road from the tote. And it's free entry, so no real excuse not to be there. You got, you got any, mate? Jamie, you there? Jamie!